Hi there. In this lecture, we see Joanne Corzo against Capablanca. This is in the Havana tournament of 1913, round one. So d4 from Corzo. We have knight f6, c4, d6, knight c3, knight bd7, e4, e5. So this is an old Indian defense. And we have a very aggressive f4 by Corzo. We have e takes d4, queen takes d4, knight c5, bishop e3. Here, you might think, well, what if white was forceful with e5? Well, black could actually just play d takes here. And if the exchange of queens, well, this is actually quite fine for for white and for black. It's equal. <laughs> so bishop b4 check and knight c5. Black's got the c5 square. It's an even position. So white's uh, trying to keep the queens on and the complexity going. Perhaps sensing, you know, he doesn't want end games against Capablanca, his old rival. So, yeah, he's keeping the tension in the position. We have queen e7, so targeting e4 immediately. So this forces events. We see knight d5. Castling queenside was actually, it seems possible, to give up that pawn. This position, even though black gets the pawn, there's compensation here, balancing things out dynamically. But, okay, knight d5. We have knight takes d5. e takes d5. So this is a very interesting decision, kind of going into a self-pin. Okay, so we have bishop f5, knight f3. White wants to use the e-file against black, though, and that's the key thing. But there's a very surprising move here, and it looks as though also black is dissuaded in this position and casting queenside, you know, as though there's b4. So there are very interesting questions about this position here. And in fact, Campbell plays a very interesting move, g6. Before we get into that, it offers a rook. A very dramatic, dynamic move. But, you know, the pressure goes both ways here. If black castled, let's say king f2, then rook g8, b4, there's always knight e4 check, and b6. This is okay. And you might wonder, hang on, that's not a critical test. What about b4? The thing is, g5 here, and this would kind of provide the counterpunch bishop g7 to try and drag the queen away from e3 so for example king f2 here knight e4 check there's actually taking on f4 and queen f6 ties the queen down to a1 so and, and there's other ideas so that's even as well and if b takes c5 okay bishop g7 black can at least get a draw here there's enough to get a draw from this position. There's enough pressure. White's king safety has been compromised. So this is also dynamically equal. So anyway, g6 is a very interesting move. Very tactical move, it looks as though. But the, the white king's still in the center. So we see king f2. If queen takes h8, queen takes e3 check, king d1, knight e4. And if bishop e2, knight f2 check, king e1, bishop d3. This is very dangerous for the white king in the center. And it's going to end badly for white yeah the, the rooks could be mocked up mopped up and there's a big advantage for black here so king f2 was played and we have rook g8 so that does support bishop g7 now rook e1 bishop g7 if castling queenside here queen d1 and in this position this overall it's a small advantage for white so bishop g7 and we have queen d1, knight e4 check, king g1, and now king f8, bishop d4, and you can see that's quite a nasty pin. This is actually an inaccuracy, it turns out. It seems as though bishop c1 might have been the, the way to go here, because this pin is pretty annoying. If h5, bishop d3, the pin is kind of overall in white's favor. There's a lot of pressure on e4. And for example, this situation, you can see as an example here that actually there's a lot of pressure on the black position emerging on e4 in particular. That pin's quite painful. Black might have to sack the exchange. Why it's going to be much better. So yeah, bishop c1 seems to be a way of potentially piling up a lot of pressure on e4. But bishop d4 is slightly different. We have an amazing 
you know, tactical response. And in fact, you know, it's based on this potential X-raying to try and amplify the X-raying. We have G5. Bishop takes G7 is played. The funny thing is about this, if F takes, can you see what's possible here for black to do? There's an incredible tactic based on this X-raying. Which actually, I was so excited, I, I showed my brother this as a, as a, pro, a puzzle. So what can black play and why? There's a stunning looking knight takes g5. Don't try this at home, offering the queen. So if rook takes e7, there's a, actually a forced mate in two. So for 100 points, can you see there's two variations of a forced mate in two? Test your tactics here. What does black play in this position for a forced mate in two? Yeah, it's wonderful stuff behind the scenes. It's there's knight h3, check. So there's not too many replies. The knight's covering the escape square, and our bishop takes d4 is double check and mates. When it's a double check, the king has to move. The king can't move anywhere. But there's also even this other mate in two, starting with bishop takes d4, check. Queen takes d4, and what would you play here? Yeah, knight h3. To stop the king going to f2, not knight takes, because this is king f2. But this is checkmate. Yeah. And knight takes d4, knight h3 check, and mate. So yeah, there's a, there's a funny stuff there. If f takes had been played, this is actually possible. Yeah. It shows the power of these x-rays to the king, the tactical hidden resources. So anyway, like x-rays are kind of hidden. So bishop takes g7 check. Is played rook takes g7 knight d4 bishop d7 and now f5 and things get really really dramatic tactically queen e5 queen d3 rook e8 white plays a really really good tactical move it's a really strong tactical move can you see what that is so white is trying to disconnect the support for the e4 knight and does so in spectacular fashion for 10 points i think Credit to the opponent here, Corzo. Yeah, he plays knight e6, trying to disconnect the support of e4. So f takes. So if king g8, white's just snapping off on e4 with advantage hitting the queen. So f takes is played, f takes. Now there's an immediate counter sack, rook takes e6. So having support there, immediate counter sack. If queen takes b2, then white's playing rook takes e4, and this pawn wedge is pretty impressive. You know, check, queen e3, white's just winning here with that amazing pawn wedge with a big advantage. So rook takes e6, d takes, bishop c6, providing support like this, very nifty. Queen f3 check. Here, it seems b4 might be interesting, trying to undermine the support for the e4 knight. If a6, g3, this situation is kind of going to be quite nice for white with careful play. It should have been possible to unravel, sort out king safety, and prepare to intensify the e4 pressure. So this, as a scenario, for example, is the exchange up for white. Yeah, it's a, it's a very tactical game, this one. So queen f3 check, though, is played. And now queen f4. If king g8, bishop d3, pressure mounting on e4, check queen e3 this is going to be in white's favor as well so queen f4 trying to open up the rook potentially we have queen e3 king e7 so the king sticking in the center b4 b6 b5 bishop b7 g3 now this is a mistake it does weaken some key squares around the king king safety plays a major factor here now so yes, this is a key mistake. White had better moves. So here, Campablanca plays a brilliant looking move. Can you see what he plays? Based on this X-ray rook again, in, in the main line of the game though, a very nice tactical move. So he doesn't just move the queen. When you're threatened, you wanna see if you can make bigger threats, look at the forcing variations. Uh, you don't want to be pushed around by opponents. That's a, like a golden rule, which Campablanca definitely uh, considers f his resources very carefully when there's a threat made against him. And this is a great move. 
Okay, I'm about to reveal, let's say, 100 points. About to reveal knight d2. So letting the queen just be taken under these circumstances. Yeah, if queen takes e3 check, this position with knight f2 is even, just for the record there. That was possible. But knight d2, we have queen c2, queen c3 rather. This is a huge mistake. If, if g takes... Let's look at g takes first then g takes f4 check f takes and then bishop takes h1 this is just going to be in black's favor this position if we look at this endgame transition it's in black's favor if bishop g2 queen takes e3 check and this position bishop takes g2 knight takes c4 this is actually in black's favor as well even though black is the exchange down there's enough for it okay so queen c3 though is a huge mistake because now knight a free check king f2 and now a dual pers purpose move queen f8 keeping the view on the king protecting the rook we have c5 knight e5 check king g1 knight f3 check king f2 b takes c5 here Knight takes e1 check was possible for the record. This position is not so bad for black at all if the king is prepared to walk out like this. Big advantage. So b takes c5, queen a5, knight e5 check, king g1. <clears throat> and now queen f3 threatens queen takes h1 check, queen takes c7 check, king f6. Queen takes d6, queen takes h1 check, king f2, and there's a bit of a king hunt. Queen takes h2 check, end of game. If king e3, queen takes g3 check, king d2, and here, yeah, this, this is perilous. If the king doesn't go to d2, say e2, then bishop f3 check, knight c4 check, and we're winning the queen there. So let's say king e2. Bishop f3 and knight c4 check. Bishop takes c4. We're still winning the queen there. It's just absolutely winning. If here, yeah, king e3, there's queen takes e1 check. Queen takes e2 as mate. So this is a vicious attack in the end. So quite a dramatic game. One of the more brilliant games of the tournament. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tactical clash. It shows uh, the deep tactical considerations and resourcefulness of Capablanca he doesn't play when you know when he's forced to you know he has to be tactically resourceful and he, and he is every world champion must be amazing tactically basically to be world champion because tactics are the things that usually win or lose games quite dramatically so to be in control of the tactics is vital even for a seemingly you know positional quiet player to, to be aware of the tactical resources is absolutely essential okay Hope you enjoyed this one. The game end was queen takes h2 check. Thanks very much. All comments, questions, likes and subscribes. Really appreciated. Thanks very much.